All right, hello, and a uh, quick video today. I'm basically doing a tutorial on custom key bindings in 10 minutes or less. So let's do this. Basically, I'll just demonstrate it first. First off, we've got the basic key bindings, which I've just made up classes for. So let's give you a quick demo first. So basically, you see, I've got key binding for moving up, moving down, moving left, and moving right. And as you can see, they aren't like set to anything, so there's no current binding, which is just a key code and there's no icon for it so but if i press play then i've written code that will read through a file that i've got stuff to write for as well and it's now changing well you can see it so if i just say say uh yeah so that's it and if i press escape i think it is yep i can change these keys so uh say r uh, f d and g and I click save changes and now so you'll see that there are F D and G so the key bindings uh, so now if I press stop that they've all reset back to null as you can see they're all empty I've press play again uh, yeah they're saved again so basically I will show you how I did this uh, let's see First off, I wrote two classes. The first one is a potential key. Now, this is, I've sort of reformatted the, uh, sort of basically like the key code, but instead it also has a, uh, well, it's similar to key code, as well as it having a texture 2D with an icon for it. And I've grabbed a free asset pack off Open Game Art, I think, which has loads and loads of buttons and stuff for it. I've just implemented the alphabet at the moment, but there's number keys and all the fancy bollocks. Yeah, so basically I've got prefabs of these set up in the game view. So if you look under this potential keys store, you'll see that I've got one for A, all letters are alphabet, A, B, C, and you see it goes through, I've got the icon and stuff, and yeah. So that is where the it finds out which keys we can have. And similar to that, we've got key bindings, which again have a key code and a key icon. But this is different to potential keys, whereas this is like you've created a key binding to do a specific thing. So say if it was for moving forward, oh, sorry, there's a train pass to go past. Where if they're moving forward, interacting with an object or whatever, you'd have, be able to have custom buttons to do that. So you'd name that, but what you'd be, what you put under the name, so a key binding name. So in my one, I have like move up, move down and stuff. So yeah, uh, now we've got a couple of methods for it here. So assign key, this is basically just you pass in a potential key and that'll be the new uh, thing for it. So it'll call it. I'm sorry, it'll like set the key code and icon to be the respective key that's passed in. Uh, we've also got a... You know how uh, input.get key has three methods to get whether it's pressed down, held, or released for each key. Well, basically this does the same thing. It returns a ball and it checks if there's a current binding and it return, if you're pressing it, then it'll return true, else it'll return false. So that's that. It's basically the same, but I've got some debugging as well, debug log, just to show you that it's being held. And yeah. So go on to Input Manager next. So this is basically what controls it's the uh, everything for the input. So it's got a it's got a static reference to itself, so it's just basically me. So we can reference it from other scripts. Uh, we've got an array of the current key bindings, which I will show you here. So it's still on that, and then we've got the current key bindings. So move up, move down, move left, and move right. And then we've got all the potential keys. So all the from A to Z as well. Uh, this is just for drawing the GUI so we can have like a, a scrolling section where well basically you could have more and more keys and it won't take up a massive chunk of the screen it'll just be like a box but it'll have a scroller at the side so you can do that. Uh, ball just to say whether we want to draw the key assignment GUI. Uh, I think this is the local variable just used when we're assigning a new 
uh, potential key to a key or key mining, whatever. Uh, key code, this is the key that the binding that's changing to. Uh, whether we are currently trying to assign a new key to a key binding. And this is just an event to work out which keys we'll press to detect the input. Okay, so first off, we've got that's just assigning me. Uh, don't destroy and load basically means that the object that stores all the input management will be, if you put it in your fir the first scene that loads, it will just stay with it and it'll be in every scene uh, as long as that first scene was loaded and you're not like in the editor. So if it's like someone actually using a build, it should stay throughout all the scenes unless you destroy it for some reason. So they'll be able to reference it. All right, uh, and then we got basically this is just a sort of like demonstration uh, thing. So it'll basically just press open the re control reassignment menu whenever I press escape. You should probably like change it. Say if you wanted to assign uh, opening this to part of the, as part of a button in your options menu or whatever, then you can change that. Oh, that's just more for an example. And I've got the update, and yeah, what was that? Uh, I'll get to that bit in a minute, and E just assigns the event that's currently happening. So like uh, key presses are events and stuff, but you don't really need to know about that much. I don't think I use it anymore, actually. But, oh well. Uh, so yeah, so this is basically where your other scripts will interface with the input. They won't go directly to the key binding. They'll just say, uh, all right, save your movement scripts, wanted to check. All right, are we moving up? So we'd pass move up as the key name. And what this script would do is it would go through each of the current key bindings and find if if you can find a uh, the key. So if you've given it the correct name, so move up, and you're pressing the W key, because that was what was assigned to move up as the key code, then it returned true. But if you did find it and you weren't pressing W, it would return false. And if it's not the key, then it just continues. And if for some reason you've gone through all of them and you can't find the key, then it just returns false just to prevent it all going crash. And that is the same for being held and is the key release. So this is basically what you use in any other script to interface with the movement to work out whether a button was being pressed or not. Uh, we've also got a method to get the keys from name. So, say uh, it goes through each of the keys and finds if the string passed through it is the same as the key's name. So, like I said, we've got a key binding name, which move up, move down, whatever. And if it's true, then I'll return it, else it returns null. Um, we've got a similar one for get potential key from key code. So, basically, if we're looking for a specific key code that would, might be on our keyboard, so say A or B or whatever, then we pass that in, and if the potential key had it, then we just get that and return it. <coughs> that is what compare to does, by the way. It's essentially, basically, like saying if cur equals equals this key, we the same thing. And again, if we can't find it, we just return null and say, all right, something's gone wrong. We're just going to stop and not do that. Uh, assign new key. I think you'll remember from the well, probably won't, but. It was there in the update function. So basically, if we're assigning key, so we've clicked on uh, like reassign move up, so we'll print W and save changes made. So that is what. So once we've clicked, uh, I'll keep it open. Once we've clicked reassign move up, uh, then it'll be true. So that method will be being called and we'll wait. it'll be waiting for us to press a key that we want to change it to. So. Yeah. So let's so just go back to the code. Uh, what it does, so if uh, that is actually called on the on GY, I believe. So when we've pressed the reassign key button, uh, it will assign, it'll set the that specific key, so if it was move up, move down, to be the one that's being assigned to, and assigning key to true. And it has a little pop-up and gets and it will check if the event is the current event is a key press, 
then it'll set the key code of the key to change to to be whatever button was pressed, if that makes sense. And then it has a little box to say, we're wanting to assign a new key. And what this does, so once you've pressed the GY button for you want to assign a new key and press the key, it'll pass that in. It'll pass in the key binding of what you want to reassign. And if, sorry, try. And if the key code wasn't none, so that suggests that there wasn't a key code assigned to the thing, in, assigned to a key code dot change to. So we found a key has been pressed, and we'll then look for the key that was pressed in all the potential keys. And if it doesn't return null, so that would suggest that the potential key, the potential keys array has whatever key you just pressed in it. So it'll then assign that. So the move up will have W as its new move up. So it'll get the texture and key code and assign it to that. And then it'll set key to change back to key code dot none. So like just to make sure it's all clean and doesn't like assign another but, uh, key binding to be W as well. And set signing key to false because we're done now. We don't need it anymore. And else, if it can't find the key, It'll just say assigning key to false and just gives you a message in the editor to say that we couldn't find the key because you've not got it in the potential keys. And yeah. But I think that's it, aside from the formatting data, which we use the input reader writer. So basically, this is what we use to write the settings and read them from a file. It's just a dot dat file. Uh, which we store in my documents. That's what we use this line of bit of code for. So this basically just uh, grabs the my documents folder from whatever system you're on, Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever. And then this little bit just adds, all right, we want to create a separate file in that folder called keybindinfo.dat. That's just where we'll store it. You uh, store it. You might want to keep it with your other settings data if you're making a game or put it in its own folder or whatever choice is yours but I'm just doing that for simplicity uh, this is just a string to output the last red uh, thing that I was using to read what it put in and out so yeah so as soon as we start we load the data so uh, if the file exists at that path that we've said so in my documents fucking version drain So yeah, if the, if the file exists, it will open the file for binary formatter and open that file and then read through it and put it in the input store class, which is basically just a serializable class with a string, you know, basically so we can just write that to a file. That's why it's serializable. And it reads through that, uh, deserializes it, so it turns it back from the .dat file into the input store class. And then we pass that back to the input manager to deformat it from what we write it as to uh, the key codes and names of uh, the key bindings that we made. And then, it <coughs> sorry, a bit of a soft rope. And then we've got the a similar thing for save, where we pass in the formatted data, which again comes from the input manager, which I'll explain in a moment. Uh, it basically just writes the data to a new instance of the input store class and then serializes that. So it turns it into a .dat file and then closes the file. So yeah, and if you're wondering what we have for the serialization, or well, not serialization, uh, the how we store this data, so how do we want to store the key code and stuff. So basically, this is uh, how we do it. I'll just show it. All right, so you can see on mine, we've got four keys, uh, key bindings created. Move up, move down, move left, and move right. And you can see here, and this is how the uh, program formats it. So we've got move up, move down, move right, and move left. Uh, and also you can see that they are separated by a comma, and this will be whatever you've saved the uh, 
key that you want it to assign to. So if we press W in this instance, we'd move up, S, move down. And the key binding and the key code for it is separated by a comma. And each of the uh, separate ones, there's key bindings and their respective uh, key codes are separated by a semicolon, which we use to separate all the data out when we're reading it from the string. So basically when we're writing it, we use this to this bit, basically string dot concat to get all the key bindings that we have and put them into that format and writes it to the file. And when we're reading the data from the file, we first thing we do is we split the string into semicolons. So this gives us an array of strings, which are basically just the key binding and its key code. So that would be, uh, yeah. <coughs> and then we use a for each loop to go through all of these that we've got. And we split it again, but this time by the comma. So the this will give us a load of uh, two element arrays. Uh, and the, the first element will be the name of the key binding. So move up, move down, whatever. And the second element will be the key code. So first off, we get the key binding we want to assign the save data to by using its name, which just we I showed you the method before, get key binding from name. And it goes through all the key bindings and checks for one that has that name. And if it has it, it returns it. And, and if the key is not equal to null, so it's found something, then it will assign the key. It will find a potential key from a key code. And what this bit of code does is it will parse the uh, key code from whatever character you get from it. You give to it, sorry. So say split to one is basically going to be A, W, S, or D, or whatever you've saved it as. <coughs> and then that will, if it can find that, <coughs> sorry, it'll assign it. But yeah, and that's pretty much it. I'll put this up on itch.io. Uh, yeah, hopefully that was helpful for you. I found it quite entertaining. I just woke up this morning and thought I'd do it. So yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Well, actually, I'll just give you a demo, one last demo before. All right, so again, we've got our key bindings. We've got w, uh, up, down, left, and right. So, so we press escape. We open up a menu. We want to assign these. So W, S... A, D, we'll save the changes, we'll stop again, restart, and hey look, it saved W, A, S, and D. W, or well, S, A, and D, but whatever, same thing. So yeah, uh, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you to Zulu, Zulu, whatever that name is, I can't pronounce it, I'm sorry. I will put a link to the where I got these icons in the description, it was off open the uh, game art. And there'll also be a link to the itch.io download of whatever when I put it up. So it'll just be like a simple thing to import, which will be fun. Uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, go watch my other videos. You know how it works. Bye.